I don't want to just complain about it. I want to do something about it. I want to do a project where I would personally go on the streets and start cleaning it up in whatever little way I can. And we all take a pledge right now that we will help you in whichever way possible. I said, we all take a pledge that we will help you in whichever way possible. I hope so. <laughs> but even if you don't help me, I want to do something about it. <laughs> Guys, that was for all of you. I'm going to help. <laughs> Not for me, the joke's on you. <laughs> so how long did it take for you to get your visa to come here? It doesn't matter. Whatever I get, I will come with it, begin it. And I will go back home. Uh, sorry, Nitra. No, what I meant was how long, how, how, how many years did it take for you to get your visa to finally get here? Was it troublesome? Uh, no, no. I got a visa right away. I applied uh, internet and I went to work to uh, visa. <laughs> it is a question rarely asked to me. And I'm glad Neha has asked me this question. After my prison time, I had to begin somewhere, a new life. I missed my parents because my parents were living in India and I was in Switzerland. I could not come and visit my parents right away and my parents didn't get the visa right away. I was missing them terribly. So when I would walk the streets of Switzerland and see old people, I would see my parents in it. And then luck was again on my side. And I read a little uh, two lines article in German, which I didn't know then. I couldn't speak German or understand. But somehow these two lines did the trick. I felt in here there is something for old people. So I asked somebody who spoke English and said, can you please explain to me? And says, you can take three to five people in your house and take care of people or in your apartment. Very next day, I started looking for a house to rent. Didn't have money, so I had to deal with the rent. I got me a one family, six room house, and I took my first five patients there. Five old people. And I began with this nursing home. Then five became 16, and 16 became 34. And I have it. And similarly, there was a day I was vacationing in Mauritius. I went to visit a couple of homes there. And there I was so ashamed of mankind, the way the people were being handled and the conditions were there. My vacation was ruined. I went, ha uh, went home to Switzerland and I said, you can complain about it only when you do something about it. So true. So I went back a few weeks later, rented a house and now I have a lovely residential care home there for 20 beds for underprivileged people. And it is the same passion about cleaning up India. Of course I can't clean up India if I think with right mind. My sisters told me you are mad and they are right. But I want to begin somewhere just a small sprout and maybe it will become a jungle.
That's fantastic. Bhagwan is not there and his madness is not there. <laughs> I work for a mad man and I loved every minute of him. <laughs> How many of you here are working for mad men? <laughs> see, see, they're not going to say it. I told you, there's only one person who's going to like be serving savageness and it's this one. She's at least saying it, but it's fine. Uh, but you know, that's, that's one thing. Now with the work that you're doing, what are the lessons that you learned when you were in the ashram that you're applying now in your, in your current life, in your current work? Every part of my existence now has fragrance of commune that I lived in, fragrance of Bhagwan's teachings that I have carried in my heart and in my brains. The way I ran commune, that is the same way I run my nursing home. There is same love, same passion, same intensity. I have there. And it begins from small thing like cleaning up to the administration and implementations of the laws. I had to learn whole new culture in Switzerland, whole new laws, how to go about it. And it keeps me entertained also and I say before I did Bhagwan's work, now I'm my own boss. I prefer the term criminal over spiritual. Um, is there any specific reason behind this? How true. How true. That's exactly how I feel and I'm glad I said somewhere I had forgotten that I have said something like that. So I'm glad, <laughs> glad you can be of help. <laughs> There is certain honesty in criminality. <laughs> but don't go out and crimes, okay? That's not my purpose. What bigger crime is there than to sell you a product which has no guarantee? <laughs> We must note this down. <laughs> right. I mean, people sell meditation and enlightenment. That's like most of our dietitians. They say <laughs> 10 kgs in 4 months and there's no guarantees. The spiritual leaders are like our dietitians. They make false exactly. promises. Exactly. <laughs> so, what I, I don't want to discourage any but here who is meditating or who is spiritual or is into enlightenment but I cannot be duped by that. <coughs> if you understand the concept and logic you will use that time that you give in meditation into self-reflection, trying to know yourself. When you are in meditation and you're thinking about becoming enlightened through that process, you're not meditating, you are hankering for something, for future. And meditation is to be here and now in this very moment. So I say something that you don't know, why wait for it? It would be like waiting for Godot. You can go on waiting, but if waiting makes you pleasure, do it by all means and say, Hey, I love it. Then no problem. But I I'm not for that. I wasn't for that before.